There are now only five riders ahead with a lead of a minute and a half. Only Tail de Roy now survives from the original 17. The Dutchman in blue and at the back is living his greatest moment. But with Roubaix almost in sight, de Roy feels the teeth of hell. He crashes into a falling rider. His dreams are shattered. The other rider to fall is Rudy Darnan, second last year and one of the few men to admit he loves this race. But this isn't the time to ask if he really means it. The slice moves ahead alone in the chaos, leaving de Roy in a ditch. Belgian Eric van der Aarden has always been compared with the greatest rider who ever lived, Eddie Merckx. But he must leave the side of Kelly if he is to become the first Belgian winner of this race for 10 years. Van der Aarden's won hundreds of races as an amateur, but although he's a highly paid professional, he still has never won the big one. In contrast, Patrick Verslijs has never won a major race, despite seven years as a professional. The pack is getting desperate. And even Kelly, a leader, is chastised. These are desperate times now, and the pack begins to panic. <laughs> Moser is alert to the dangers, and he isn't afraid to use more than just his legs to make progress. the leaders, Darlins is down again. If he likes this race, then perhaps he should steer clear of wearing number 13. So once more, Patrick Verslice is alone in front. Everyone around him has fallen. The 28 years old Belgian, because of his obsession to win Paris-Roubaix, has even built a bike especially for the course. The polished surfaces continue to claim its victims, hindering the chase. But the sight of Eric van der Aarden alone means only one thing. Sean Kelly himself has gone down. Patrick Verslice is still in the lead. his challengers falling by the wayside, it's only five miles to Roubaix, and 141 riders are gone. Patrick Verslice, ranked number 145 in the world, is now number one in the world's greatest race. For six years, Verslice has finished this race never worse than 15, never better than seven. He's just five miles from Roubaix, and a dream come true. Muddied and battered after two crashes, now knows his quest for a third victory is over. The aging Francesco Moser also knows he'll never catch the unknown riders he once would have only considered worthy of a training session. Two men are spoiling the slice's dream, and teammates Rudy Donans and Philip Vandenbrand have resurrected themselves from the mud of the cobblestones. Now there are three. Eric van der Aarden is determined to prove he is not just a man who rides in the shadow of others. Alone in pursuit, he has to bridge a minute. At 25, the ex-reform school student is living through his greatest moment. Greater than any of his Belgian championships, and he's won them all. Eric van der Aarden has single-handedly, without help from anybody, chased down the leaders. The front group, now wondering if one of the great sprinters in the world has anything left after his long chase. With the finish line in sight, he joins the leaders. Van der Arden has words with Verslice. 
Four Belgian gunfighters squaring off at high noon on Main Street, Roubaix. Van der Rodden, the man of unfulfilled promise, now has only to do what he does best, sprint to the finish. Seven hours of racing and a 15-second sprint, and Eric Van der Rodden wins the 1987 Paris-Roubaix. The finish line frenzy calms down when Eric Van Der Laarden's wife and baby come to celebrate with him. But the European press is relentless in their pursuit of the new king of Paris-Roubaix. No worry though, Van Der Laarden will put up with the madness because in a little while he'll get his winner's check for $50,000, which he'll gladly share with teammates like Theo Deroy. I am extremely happy that uh, Eric has won. Uh, I can't find any other words. I'm very happy that uh, he made it uh, work worthwhile. So in a race dominated by domestiques like DeRoy, the designated leader of the Panasonic team, Eric Van Der Arden, was the winner. Now the final standings. Eric Van Der Arden becomes the first Belgian to win Paris-Roubaix in 10 years. In fact, the Belgians took the top four spots. Kelly and Moser, three and a half minutes back. A half hour after the race, workmen were well into tearing down the stands and packing up and putting it all away for Paris-Roubaix next year. Well, back out on the course, Bob Roll would cross the finish line 39 minutes behind the winner as a top American finisher. Andy Hampston and Jonathan Boyer were the only other Americans to survive the hell of the North. For Phil Liggett, I'm John Dockery. So long from Roubaix.